In this video, we'll work through an example uh, illustrating how we can use the formula we've derived from uh, time-dependent perturbation theory to calculate the transition probability uh, due to a time-dependent perturbation. So in this example, we're considering a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator that's initially in the ground state. So using our previous notation, that means that ket i is just uh, the n equals zero state uh, at uh, some time in quotes uh, minus infinity. So at the beginning of time, the harmonic oscillator was in the ground state. And then we perturb the system by applying an electrostatic field. So this harmonic oscillator has some charge E and we're applying uh, so not an electric, but an electric field that has this time dependence. Okay, that creates a time dependent uh, uh, potential. And we wanna know what the, uh, so I guess this shouldn't be uh, electrostatic, this should be an electric potential. And then we're interested in the probability that the oscillator will be in state N uh, at the end of time, essentially. So here, our final state will be state n. Okay, so uh, in the previous video, we saw that the probability, if we're starting in some state i, to be in state f at time t, which in this case would be state zero going to state n. This was one over h bar squared. The square modulus um, from the moment we turn on the perturbation until uh, sometime t when we make a measurement. or uh, the matrix element of our time dependent perturbation that couples the state f with the state i e to the i omega f i so this is the um the angular frequency uh, i guess you can think of it as the angular frequency of a photon that will be emitted transition between these two states and t prime all this squared. Okay, so uh, the first thing we can do is we can calculate what omega fi will be, which in this case, because the final state is in general a state n and our ground state is state zero. We can do this by calculating the energy differences of those two states. So on the one hand for state n, this is our energy. And then for the ground state, our uh, energy is h bar omega naught over two. Omega naught here being the natural frequency of the oscillator. And then to get a uh, just the angular frequency, we divide by h bar. And what you end up getting is this is and omega naught. We can also calculate what this matrix element is. This will be uh, taking out these constants and the time dependence. And we're looking at uh, here state f will be state n. We have our x hat operator from our perturbation here. And then our initial state was the ground state. Uh, we were able to take this time dependence out because it doesn't uh, affect the stationary states. It doesn't operate on them. All right, 
uh, to calculate this, we can use the fact that the X hat operator for a harmonic oscillator can be expressed in terms of the uh, creation and annihilation operators. We have A hat and A hat dagger, where uh, A hat promotes the energy level, and that's a normalization constant. And a and hat a hat dagger will demote an energy level. This is minus one. In particular, if you act on the ground state with the annihilation operator, you just get zero. Okay, so. Putting all that together for our matrix element. We get this quantity because the annihilation operator acting on the ground state just gives you zero. Uh, this term is zero, and this term over here will give you uh, n one. So it'll promote the ground state to the first excited state. The uh, normalization constant is just square root of one. And this is equal to Kronecker delta of n one. So what this means is even, uh, even though we're looking at a very large portion of time, the harmonic oscillator will, will only be ever able to transition to uh, the first excited state. There's the minus sign here. Okay, and that's simply because if you remember our interpretation of this matrix element, it couples two states that uh, can transition uh, to one another. So um, what that means then is the only states that are coupled are the ground state and the first excited state. There's no coupling between any other state and the ground state, so it can't possibly transition to any other state. Putting this back into our equation over here, where n is equal to one now. Just write this like that. And we're integrating for the duration of the perturbation, so from minus infinity to infinity. This is the time dependence of our perturbation. And this was the, uh, the term that was in our integral to begin with uh, this term over here. Okay, the integral is a, a variation of a Gaussian integral, which you can uh, compute by completing the square. So this over here will give you square root of pi tau squared root minus Omega naught squared tau squared over four. 
Okay, this is the value of the integral. So what we're left with in the end, taking the square modulus of everything, this is E. This is a uh, E squared from this part over here. And then the four becomes a two once you take the square modulus. Okay, so this is our uh, transition probability that after some, uh, at the end of time, essentially when time is equal to in, tends to infinity, uh, our transition probability of going from the ground state to the first excited state is given by this expression. Okay, so this is an example of how you apply our result uh, from first order time dependent perturbation theory to calculate transitions.